If you are a robotics enthusiast who build robots for fun, or a professional that creates and develops robotic systems and algorithms for a living, then you probably heard about Gazebo. Gazebo is a well-known robotics simulation tool that provides a robust physics engine with high-quality programmatic and graphical interfaces. Learning to use Gazebo makes it possible for you to rapidly test algorithms, design robots, perform regression testing, and train AI systems using realistic scenarios. In my experience, practical learning through projects is far more efficient than just reading a book. So in this video, we are going to build a simple robot in Gazebo in order to learn the basics of this useful software. The robot we are going to build is just a simple two-wheeled vehicle that can detect objects using the depth camera and eventually move in their direction. Now when you open Gazebo, go ahead to the model editor just like this. The model editor is where you're gonna make the robot before you're using it in an actual simulation. And by the way, this tutorial is available in Gazebo official site, so you can check it out afterwards. The first step in building the robot is creating the chassis, so go ahead and click on the cube shape in the insert tab. A cube will be attached to your cursor, so place it wherever you want and release it by a left click. Press S to switch to the scaling tool and scale the cube roughly to this shape. Make sure the length is somewhat around 2 meters. You can approximate this by comparing it to the 1 by 1 meters grid square on the floor. Please make sure to save the model since some gazebo distributions may be glitching and exit without any warning. So to avoid losing your work, save the model by pressing Ctrl S once in a while. If you double click on any shape in gazebo, a link inspector window will be appearing allowing you to change the object properties. Now if you scroll down to the pose tab, you will see the actual pose of the object expressed by the three dimensional position and rotations. We want the vehicle body to be a little bit higher, so we just assign the position of the Z axis to be 0.4 meters. The next step is creating and attaching the wheels. So select the cylinder from the insert tab and place it just beside the chassis. We need to rotate the cylinder sideways, so open the link inspector and assign a rotation of 180 degrees around the X axis. After we finish this, open the visual tab and scroll to the geometry section where you can specify the length and the radius of the wheel as follows. If you left click outside the text field, you will notice that the wheel appearance has changed, but the collision parameters are still the same. To change that, open the collision tab and specify the appropriate length and radius in the geometry section. And then click OK to close the inspector window. Now you have one wheel and we just have to copy and paste to create another one. These wheels are still not attached to the chassis and uh, so we have to create some sort of a connection. This can be done using joints. After you select a joint tool, choose the chassis as the parent and then left click to the wheel to assign it as the child. In this window, you can specify many details about this joint, but the most important thing for us right now is setting the axis. We want the z-axis of both the chassis and the wheel to coincide in order for the wheel to rotate. You can check whether the right axis was chosen by inspecting the wheel closely. And you can see this yellow circle in the z-axis. All that is left to do here is to align the wheel to be in the desired pose. So in the Align Link section, choose X and Y maximum until the wheel is aligned as shown in the screen. And then reverse the Y axis so the wheel is positioned in the correct location. You will notice that it's still not aligned correctly regarding the world Z axis. So we will do that manually from the Link Inspector by translating it 0.3 meters upwards. The same thing is done to the other wheel, but this time we choose the Y minimum in the alignment and of course the inverse have to be checked. We also choose the same height of the wheel as the other one so we copy and paste from the link inspector so the wheels are placed in parallel to each other.
this robot will not move properly, with just two wheels, we need an additional caster wheel to be placed in the back. So we grab a sphere and resize it to have 0.2 meters radius in the visual and the collision tabs, and as we did with the front wheels, we create a joint, but this time we have to change the joint type. By default, this is set to Revolo joint, which give us a rotational movement around one axis. But since the ball can move in all directions, we choose a ball joint for this one. As for the alignment, we choose X min and Y center. The caster wheel is now aligned, but we still have to elevate it a little bit, just like we did with the front wheels. And that's it. We finished the mechanical structure of the robot. Like I mentioned in the introduction, this robot will be able to detect obstacles using a depth camera that can measure the distance to those obstacles. One convenient way to do this is to import a depth camera from the Gazebo Sim website. The objects in here are organized alphabetically, so scroll down till you find a depth camera and just click on it, just like you did with the shapes. Wait a minute till the import is done and press T to translate the camera just on top of the robot. And as you probably guessed by now, we will create a joint between them. So choose a fixed joint for this one since no movement will happen. And by doing this the robot is physically complete. We just have to provide it with the code necessary to achieve the object detection and following behavior. This code is implemented in the form of a plugin, and using this plugin is a fairly easy task. In the model tab, go to model plugins and then select add to spawn a window called model plugin inspector. Inside the window, you will find three fields. The first one is the name of the plugin, just write follower. The second one is the file name and you have to write the following name. Make sure to copy the exact name or else this won't gonna work. And then click OK. By doing this you have finished building this robot and all we have to do right now is to test it. So close the model editor. Of course now since you saved this model, you can use it directly in any of your projects. After starting the simulation, grab a cube from the available shapes and place it just in front of the robot. And you will notice that the robot is moving towards that cube. Based on your taste, you can change the colors of your robot parts by selecting the robot again and choosing Edit Model, which will take you to the model editor where you can specify any color you want. You have a full function robot now, and in the future, I'll go through how you can manually control your robot. But until then, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and activate the notifications. See you in another video with another idea. Goodbye.